is jy die groter Witsenberg municipaliteit as die area van, waar van die Koolbokkeveld en die Witsenberg vallei, seker een groot deel uitmaak, sit ons op die dak van die weeskaap. The catchment that we're in now at the moment is inside the middle of the important water source areas where 80% of our water is coming from 10% of our province's surface area. All the water flowing off there flows down into the Olifants system, into the Berg system, into the Breda, and where we're standing right now, which is in the Duran River system. It's a very large catchment, about 80,000 square kilometers. It's one of South Africa's really unique wilderness areas, critical from a biodiversity point of view, but also a very important agricultural hub. It was for 30 years plus what we now here boer. It was a really unexpected landbouw unit. Op that stadium was ons baie beindruk met die hoeveelheid water wat beskikbaar is in hierdie omgeving. Kan jy boerdery as 50 geslag familie plaas. Ons het hoofsakelik perskes, pere, pruime en appels en ook citrus buite seisoen. Vrugte boerdery is 'n mense besigheid en dis baie belangrik vir ons mense dat hulle saam met ons ons plaasvoering toe vat. Dit is die plek waar ek asem haal hier op die plaas. Ek dink dit sal vir my baie moeilik wees om in die stad gro of te bly en dis vir my 'n groot voorreg. Ek is gebore in Wollaston, die droogste gedeelte van die wêreld. Toe hierdie geleentheid in 2014 my te beurt val om 'n stukkie grond hier te kry in die Bokkeveld te koop. Mense, dit was like a dream come true. Die plaas se naam is Klein Vleis, 298 hektar groot. Ons het aanvanklik besluit, maar dit is 'n area wat ideaal gelees vir rooi appels, iets wat 'n mooi blos het. Vruchtenboerder is water een van jou belangrijkste um, dinge wat jy moet bestuur. Hy is omtrent drie keer soveel grond soos water in hierdie vallei. En ek dink dit is een van ons uitdagings om dit te besef. My beheerman gee op hierdie stand my vir 15 hektar water en dis wat, wat ek eindig nou in die grond het al reeds. Hy kan nie meer vir my meer gee nie met ander woorde. As ek nie meer water gaan kry nie, dan is ek soort van in die blik gedruk. Ek is definitief bekommerd oor die water. Ons groot probleem hier waar ons twee rivier wat ek boer is die probleem nie noodwendig winter afloop water nie, maar meer somer water. Ons plaas het in die verlede altyd kan volhoubaar boer met 'n rivier wat relatief standhoudend is en dit word al meer onder druk. Water is their lifeline. That's what all the farming is about. You can have land, but if you don't have the water, then uh, that land doesn't mean much. Ek dink hierdie droogte tyd het vir ons deur iets gevat wat uh, ons nie gereken is moendlik in hierdie omgeving nie. Die reen in die winter korter seisoen geval en dit maak dat hy baie langer droer somer is. Die afgelopen tyd in die hele Westkaap en in ons land het dit allemaal weer op niet laat besef en my nieuwe oog gelat kyk na water. It created an opportunity to start having these talks with farmers and they started realizing how critically important it is to look after these water sources and themselves. Hoe ons aangepas het vir die droogte was ons het meer probeer in die nacht besproei. Ons besproei met een korter periode en kry ons selwe liters water per hektar. En ons het met die droogte het ons net eenvoudig moes besnoei en net minder ure per week per blok gee so goed as kan bestuur. Providing water to a river system is a bit of a balancing act. We need to make sure that there's enough water in, in the river system over the summer months. So you need adequate flows, particularly over your riffle areas. Your riffle areas are the most sensitive areas. They are the first to lose water when the levels drop, and they're also the most productive areas of a river system. The rivers that flow off the Cedarberg Mountains are home to some of the most unique and threatened species in Southern Africa. Many of these species, like the Tuya River Redfin, for instance, have very, very limited distribution ranges, some of the smallest distribution ranges in the country. And all of those fish require particular types of habitat at certain times of the year in order for them to complete their life cycles. 
during October, November, they require fast flowing water over cobbles and boulder. Large schools of fish move onto these high flow riffle areas. They deposit their eggs in between the gravel, so the gravel must be clean. The water must be flowing through that gravel to aerate the eggs so that those eggs can incubate over a period of 10 days or so. They move up out of the gravel and the young fish move into the shallow areas. So there's all sorts of different components of the flow regime that are important to maintain these ecosystem processes. Quite a few years ago when we visited Australia, a farmer there said to us one morning at the breakfast table that conservation starts after breakfast. <laughs> and he was referring to farmers producing food for the country. It's important that we recognize the fact that the farmers are, especially during this COVID time, how much they contributed to ensuring that there's still food on the table for the people of South Africa. So what we're trying here with a tool that we want to develop with FRC and WWF that will provide the farmers the opportunity to do their own water balancing. With a river, you can't fence water. It goes where it wants to. It evaporates into the sky, it flows down the mountain, it gets abstracted at this point, a tributary comes in here. So it's a very difficult habitat to manage. The science of environmental flows, or what we refer to as ecological reserve in South Africa, is designed to share water equitably among users and also provide some for the environment. One of the biggest challenges of implementing the ecological reserve is that you have to resolve the needs of many different users. The needs of those farmers that are sitting up in the Koa Felt, right in the watershed areas, all the way down to the fishermen on the coast. Measuring and, and monitoring flows is, is critical. You need to understand how much rain is falling on the ground in your catchment and how much of that rainfall is being transferred into runoff and how much runoff is being used and then how much you've got left. We'll put in a logger that measures water pressure, translates that water pressure into water level and by establishing a relationship between that water level and the volume of water coming down the river at different times of the year, we're able to estimate how much water is in that pot, how much can be allocated to farmers, and how much we can set aside for ecosystem processes. For farmers, when you first start talking to them, it's important to say, but what is your vision? How do you want to see this river or this catchment in 20 or 30 years from now? What do you want to leave behind? And once you've got that picture in mind, then it's about sitting down and working out a plan. And the plan that we specifically have for the rivers is river maintenance and management plans that allows farmers the opportunity to take a map, sit down around a table and map their needs to manage the river in such a way that it's sustainable and that they can still get the services from that river. Ons het basis op die dak, ons moet nie moors met die water nie, daaronder is nog baie mense wat daar voor van hem woordig is. Ons moet leer om te kan deel met mekaar en ons moet kan leer om te water te bestuur, want water is een baie skaars halbron. Wat ek in die boek kan doen, het ook een invloed op die persoon na onder my. Ons kan nie op eilande boer en ding wat ek doen is goed nie. Ons moet ook om saam een verskil te maak. En ons moet allemaal saam die selwe visie en ideale deel om voor en toe te gaan. As ons manne op die dak en die ouwens daar op die onder eend van die gatters ook by mekaar kan uitkom en een begrip het vir mekaar so omstandig hier, dan denk ek gaan ons baie meile wen. If we can get it right here and it can work, we can pick this model up and put it down anywhere else in the province. The thing is, farmers are conservationists by heart. They do want to conserve the, the water sources. They want to conserve this environment that they're staying in. So I think they know and they really do understand the importance of the catchments and the ecology and the services that's being provided. Ek wil hierdie stukje grond, wil ek so boer, dat elke hasie, elke bokkie, elke skilpad, elke slang, 
moet kan samen met ons hier zo een leven maken. En mijn kinders moet ook leren dat om een harmonie met die natuur te boer, aan het einde van die dag, die enigste volhoudbare manier te wees van doen. Ik denk dat het ook een schepingsopdracht in, in die Bijbel wat sê, je moet die aarde bewoon, bewerken, bewaar. So om dat uit te leef, sal ons moet samenwerken. Ik denk één persoon alleen kan het die, ons kan een verskil maak, maar het kan niet die groot verskil maak wat ons behoort te maak, as ons nie saam het. Ik denk dat is een goeie gees onder die mens om verskil saam te maak.